Hi, I'm Susanna, co-author along with my colleague Julie Dunstan of Flexible Mindsets in Schools, channeling brain power for critical thinking, complex problem solving, and creativity. I will be your guide through this 30-minute mini course as we explore four key drivers of flexible mindsets. Today's world offers unprecedented challenges and opportunities. We wrote this book because we truly believe that all students are capable of being innovators that can solve the world's problems, and the teachers are the ideal partners in making that possible. We hope this mini course will be just the beginning of our journey together, exploring flexible mindsets and how they can transform you and your classroom. We welcome you to collaborate with us in transforming classrooms into places where both teachers and students are active, resilient, and adaptable and where all thinkers can thrive. In this first video in our mini course, The Role of Curiosity in Flexible Mindset Schools, we will uncover the power of curiosity to spark learning. Curiosity is just as important as IQ in determining how well students do in school and beyond. We open with this quote because curiosity is one of the cornerstones of a flexible mindset. It is what drives us to want to learn, dig deeper, and persevere Curiosity is the motivation for active learning. In our book, we question the over-reliance on one of the most common approaches to classroom instruction that involves three steps. First, the student watches a teacher model, then the teacher and the student do it together, and finally, the student does it on their own. Does this approach sound familiar to you? Do you find yourself planning your lessons using this approach? This systematic approach is effective for many foundational learning experiences, such as learning how to read and do calculations. However, what this approach does not do is spark curiosity. It's too predictable. We already know what's going to happen. Curiosity is what happens when we encounter something unusual, novel, or unexpected. It sparks a desire to be inquisitive. It drives us to want to investigate, explore, and learn more. It is marked by questions like, I wonder what would happen if? How does this work? What else could this be used for? Flexible Mindsets in Schools presents new ways of looking at how we structure learning and also what is happening in the brain when we learn. When we combine our instructional approaches with an understanding of how we learn, magic happens. Applying research about the brain and making it real helps students to buy into the effort required to learn and apply new strategies. The more we help students understand how their brains learn, the better learners they become. They begin to take charge of their own learning and can personalize it based on what works for their unique brain. This is the path towards self-directed learning. So what's happening in the brain when we are curious? There is a reason our brains are hardwired to be curious. Trying new things has an adaptive function and it has been critical throughout human evolution. If you think back to our early days as humans, unfamiliar things were often a signal that something dangerous or harmful was about to happen. We had to pay attention to new things and figure them out or else we might die. So our brain is actually wired for the survival functions of surveying our surroundings and staying alert. Curiosity is a response that activates this same system called the arousal network. If the system detects something unusual, it can sound an alarm that is heard brain-wide. Anything that is novel, unusual, unpredictable, or distinctive puts our brains on alert, and therefore our brains are wired to pay closer attention to them. What we learn from new experiences can help us to respond effectively to unexpected circumstances, and it can counterbalance feelings of uncertainty and anxiety. In Chapter 2 of the book, we present five guidelines for piquing your student's curiosity. In this video, we chose to share the guideline that might, at first, seem counterintuitive. Building in time off task. Basically, giving students time to space out. Hopefully, we've piqued your curiosity and you're now wondering how scheduling time for students to space out can possibly lead to learning. We often see boredom as a negative state and something to be avoided. Boredom is actually the place we all need to visit. It's the space between busy work and inspiration. Boredom is a state of mind that happens when we take away distractions such as cell phones, video games, and television. True boredom happens 
when we have nothing to do and no one is demanding anything of us. It leaves us feeling restless, agitated, and uncomfortable, and we crave escape. In order to avoid feeling trapped in an unfulfilling state, we begin searching for something to stimulate us, something that is not readily available in our immediate surroundings. In this way, boredom is both a warning sign and a push. It may appear that the brain is shutting down. It is actually digging into a vast trove of memories, imagining future possibilities, dissecting our interactions with other people, and reflecting on who we are. In flexible mindset schools, curiosity is infused in everything we do. At the end of each chapter in our book, we leave you with a series of reflective questions that can be used to raise self-awareness and change your mindset alongside those of your students. In each video, we will share one of these questions to spark your curiosity. One of the questions from chapter two is, how will you set up periods of unprogrammed time in your classroom to give students opportunities to puzzle, reflect, or get bored? And finally, at the end of every video, we want to leave you with an experiment you can try in your classroom right now to get a taste of flexible mindsets. We chose the three curiosity questions experiment. Before your next lesson, ask students to write down three questions about the topic that they are curious about. Let students know that this is a great way to prime the brain and to spark interest in a topic. It can also be used after the lesson to grapple with the information and dig deeper into a topic. If this has piqued your curiosity about grappling, check out the next video to find out how grappling can be used to deepen our learning. If this video also piqued your curiosity about the Flexible Mindsets community and the work that we are doing, please join us on Instagram, Twitter, or subscribe to our newsletter on our website at flexiblemindsets.com.